How's that read? It reads. Is that Very good. Does that work? Lock me so it doesn't ruin the camera. <laughs>
Our first item of business tonight is a public hearing for Gardner Cognon. I'm an adjacent property owner to Mr. Cognon. So that being said, uh, so as to ensure no sense of impropriety um, in either direction of this decision, uh, I'm going to recuse myself from tonight's review uh, and any subsequent action uh, for this application. And I've asked John if he would lead us through um, this portion of the, of the review. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to John. Did you want to use? Mr. Chairman, I did. Yeah, you just, I did. Right. You can do it again. Okay. No, I'll okay. read another stuff. I just want to make sure that no Okay, well then, with that in mind, uh, we tabled the public hearing last month, and so it would be need to be open tonight. So at 704 and 320, suppose we open the public hearing for Gardner Common subdivision. So, the public hearing is open? Public hearing is open at this point. Would you like to yeah. explain the project or describe it? Well, I uh, <clears throat> probably know where to start, <clears throat> but I'll try it. I tried very hard to meet all the requirements. This is the fourth trip on now and then on my own behalf that I spent a considerable amount of money on a matter of soul was a simple process by Jim. And uh, I tried to cross all the T's and dot all the I's. I, I just reviewed what you've got before you. And I'd like to know where, either verbally or in this program that I pulled out, because I understand that there's something about a posted map that uh, somehow I was supposed to figure out was supposed to be there. I took the trouble to look back on other one lot breakouts. Never have I seen a posted map to the past. So, as I said, I tried to do that. I'm wondering, perhaps you can enlighten me how I would know that by virtue of this form I filled out and my survey I filled out. As I say, <clears throat> I was originally told it was a simple matter that Jim could handle without. I said, no, I don't want to cut any corners. To go to the so, as you know, it costs quite a bit of money to have surveyors present. And I'm not going to tell you how much it costs because I haven't even got all my bills yet. But as it turned out, thanks to the extraneous comments by Mr. Arnold, and I want this in the record, talking about, quote, dirty fill and a problem that may come up the uh, prospective purchaser <clears throat> decided that there must be something wrong and backed out of the, the deal. That's okay with me because I really didn't want to sell anyway. And I was doing them a favor since they begged me to buy the way. Notwithstanding that, and I, I do take quite a bit of anger and I'm trying to hold it down because Phil is the eye in the eye of the beholder, number one. But number two, I had taken great caution to make sure that any fill that was put there was appropriate. So in a meeting of somebody wanted to buy seven acres to pound on a question that had no relevancy whatsoever <clears throat> to what was before you. I certainly want in the record it was inappropriate, it was unnecessary, and it cost me, the applicant, a lot of money. That being said, could anybody enlighten me 
Reverend, you brought up something about a sign, which after three hours of my surveyor waiting here, was told that we couldn't act on it anymore. So can anybody explain to me that I'm supposed to be a mind reader or what, given what I've already told you, and how this could happen? I'd like, a, I'd like an answer. Anybody? Yeah. In our codes, there's a requirement for, for posting. And it's not only that. It's a posting advertising for public hearing. That copy of which is in the building department office. And usually, I don't, I don't see you have it, so I don't know. Uh, usually, that information is included in a packet that everyone's given when they come in for the uh, subdivision. Now, I did not see your packet, I did not see everybody's packet, so I just have to assume that it was there. Mm -hmm. As part of our regulations. It's standard for a subdivision. Yes. All which subdivisions, is, which is what this is. If I say notwithstanding my other concerns, what do you intend to do tonight? I believe the intention of the board was to re reconvene the public hearing. Well, contingent yeah, the public hearing, I'm here. Contingent upon. a member of the public and the applicant seeking approval without any further ado. The, the public hearing was tabled for the last month, last month's meeting, due to the lack of the proper signage. That's been done before. I've been here for, I forget how many years, but that, that's a common occurrence when an applicant fails to post it for the, for the requirements. It's happened numerous times in my tenure on this board. You're not the first. Not a single lot. Yeah, correct. And you're saying that that always happens? I'm, I'm saying that in any circumstance where the posting has been brought to light, the posting did not occur. It was not, excuse me, properly posted in accordance to the rules. The, the public hearing has been tabled. Could you show me where that rule is? Uh, as as Peter said, it, it's in the it's in the code, and it's something that's handed out. There's a template about this. I've seen the the wording. The wording is specific. So is everybody <clears throat> treated the same? Yeah. You're sure of that? We have to, to the best of my knowledge. Well, I have to say, if in, if you know somebody that didn't have one up, if this board didn't table it because uh, we didn't know it wasn't posted. It's not, I would understand perhaps if, if a uh, public hearing on a uh, subdivision with, you know, five to 48 lots that something, but when I first talked to Jim, and Jim is here to correct me if I'm wrong, I was told it was a simple process, but we'd probably run it by one meeting and it would be I, uh, very simple because it met all the requirements. What was so like instead, please, I'm not going to talk to you. Instead, we swell with the advertisers go through the whole nine yards. Never ever was any mention by Jim or anybody else in three different meetings any requirement of a sign on a one seven lot breakout of a hundred acre parcel. Not once. It's in the code for subdivision. It's notification well, it's for a subdivision. I'm supervising no, it's, in the, it's in the and code. And I'm not aware that that's required on a one, on a simple, not even really required. It's something Jim could do on its own. And I don't know what so Jim, Jim, wait, 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 no, just hang on a second. Jim couldn't approve this on his own because you had previous subdivisions off of this property in the Ag District. Yeah. Okay. And at a certain point, you trigger a, uh, an overview. If I understand it correctly, this is why this was in front of us. Otherwise, you wouldn't have even been in front of us. Beyond that, beyond that, the notification is specific to subdivision of which this is. Okay, it's no, there's no differentiation whether it's a one lot subdivision or a four lot or a 12 lot. It's a subdivision approval. Okay, it's, it's a very simple one. It's, 
subdivision is defined as breaking up of the land into building lots, but this may not have even been a building lot, as I pointed out. Maybe they wanted to plant hay or apples or whatever. It met all requirements. It was advertised. And as I've said, I looked through the forms that I was, that you've got in front of you. And no place in there does it say, nor was I given anything that said that I had to post, nor did Jim tell me. But so so let me ask you post. this. You, you so don't have to. You've done subdivisions in the town of Lord. So you wait, wouldn't it have been appropriate? Can I, can I ask you this? I know, I, I, public hearing and I'm talking. Well, no, no. Appropriate after three meetings that somebody could have said, hey, you need to put a right up if you talk to the Okay, so there. after the last meeting when we tabled it, mm -hmm. believe me, if you didn't listen to the audio, you should. We were all disappointed we tabled it. We wanted to approve this, okay? But it was brought to our attention that it hadn't been properly notified, okay? It was in the paper, but it wasn't posted on site, which is common. Than the rules for subdivision in this town. At that point, we were forced to table it. We didn't want to do that. Now, let me ask you this, though. At that point, it's in the public record, and your engineer knew, at that point, that there's supposed to be a sign on this site advertising the public hearing. Is there one now? No. So it didn't make any difference? I want to know where, it is, where, where this language is. I've asked it. I'd like to read it. Yeah, yeah section 12410, town code, paragraph D. Notice, the subdivider shall display prominently on the subject property for 10 days preceding the date of the public hearing at least one sign, two feet by three feet in size, and carrying a legend prescribed by the town planning board announcing the public hearing. The sign shall be in full public view from the street pavement and legible from the street. Property is bounded by more than one street, a sign shall be placed on each street that bounds the property. And that's what was referred to. Mm -hmm. So my question still remains, why wasn't I told that? Given the fact there's, there's initially, I understand I've heard everything that's been said. But Jim, you don't disagree when I first ask you what I needed to do. You said it would be a relatively simple matter to meet all requirements. That's correct. Yeah, but that's what I was told. Yeah. Then it is there my surveyor gets in touch with you. Nothing about that. Well relatively simple. Did, did, did I specific did I specifically tell her that a sign was required? For the record, no I did not. Let's be clear. So if you want to assign blame, I'll take it. I had assumed, I had assumed, I had assumed Kristen Dara had been subdividing this town for many years, surveying this town many years. She's been through this pro process at least one other time that I'm aware of in the six months that I've been here. Mm -hmm. I thought she knew the subdivision requirements. I did not go over specifically with her the need to post a sign of that stuff. Jim, can I ask a question? So that's did you what specifically happened? tell her that she needed to notify it in the post star? No, we did that. Okay, so we did that. We, we take care of the five, the notice of the property owners, the neighboring property owners, and we take care of the notice of the, the post star. The town takes care of that. Okay. I did not though tell her of the sign requirement. If you want to assign blame here to somebody, I'm more than happy to take it. No, actually, but, actually um, I would say I, that. But I did not specifically tell her. Was the applicant given a, a packet like everybody else? She was given the typical packet, which is the, the application packet. We make the signs available as they want them, or they can copy the verbiage down. Uh, we have it in the office. So you're aware that she has a packet? That yes, and I'm, but I'm, I'm not aware that that packet specifically has that requirement specified in it. Jim, okay. I, I ask you I see you don't uh, have that on the ordinance itself. contained within the packet that the applicant has given. It talks I've seen about before that a couple of Forrest Green was had in his. Right? Was, he submitted the whole packet back to us. That verbiage was right there. 
I don't know if one was given to Mr. Conner or not. I don't know either. But here, yeah. could I ask you this? The wording of that section you read. Yeah. Would you read that first part again, please? Okay, no one. The subdivider shall display prominently on the subject property for 10 days preceding the date of the public hearing at least one sign, two feet by three feet in size, and carrying a legend prescribed by the town planning board announcing the public hearing. The sign shall be in full public view in the three. The first part, I'm sorry, Jim, the first part for the Okay. So, as this thing progressed, if, if we discussed, uh, we went beyond the norm, and I think you, everybody would agree, showing on one lot, oversized parcel, everything including where the house is, where the septic is, where the well is. I've never seen that requirement before either, and I'm going to ignore that. We just went on a road just recently that uh, went through the process that didn't have a sign, that a force had a sign on it. That was just a few months ago. We drive by it all the time. That didn't have any, any sign on a, on a five acre split. And you know the parcel I mean. Uh, any Smith law, five acres and a flat with 4.9. <clears throat> no, there was no sign posted there. I can't hear. So, what? Garter, because it didn't need to be, didn't, it was a one, you're, you triggered a subdivision at within seven years of subdividing this property within the last seven years. You triggered the zoning law to be reviewed by us. And that zoning law went into effect in 1989. Because that's what shut down over on the West Road, one lot or one acre, one lot subdivisions, one after another, after another. At a certain point, we require a subdivision plan. All right. But if the other property was only 4.9 acres, that wouldn't have triggered a review by us, anyways, because it's not a large enough lot for a building lot. At that point, that is just a parcel of land. Seven acres is enough for a building lot, and you would have a really good footing with that argument if it wasn't for the fact that the whole reason for subdividing the seven acres is because you wanted to sell it to somebody to use as a building lot. Right? I mean, that was, I mean, in general, if you weren't selling the field to Mr. Smith to use for, for... The relevancy of Nicaea is, you're saying it had to come before you because you need all the requirements. So, but the thing is, but saying, the thing is, sir, last week it met all of our requirements agree. except for notification, but we were all ready again tonight to approve it, but now I'm hearing from yeah, you again that it's not notified. In accordance with that or that there, it does say that it should be posted, and I'm agreeing with that. But I'm saying the way this thing developed, it was not brought to my attention, nor to, I was here at every meeting. It would seem to me if, if, if a sign had to be there in one of those meetings, somebody, rather than have me have to come three times and pay the money I had to pay, somebody could have said, hey, there's no sign down here if you wanted one. Well, in that, in that case, I would have, of course, done it. But that was said last month. But I wouldn't repeat it. But, but that was said last month. It was month. on the last meeting. That was after three. But this was back in the paper for this month, right? So you're in front of us again. Mm -hmm. But there's still no sign on the project. That's right. So I have to assume that you didn't believe that you needed the sign? Is That's that correct. But all you had to do was I, I come into the town right. hall and go to the building department and ask them to see where in the code it was, <clears throat> and you would have been informed that it was necessary. And you would have had the sign I up for tonight. That. I did do that. And nobody in the building department could tell you that where it was required. Yeah. It's right in the code. I was told that it got tabled because of lack of a sign. That's after the fact. That's after the fact. That's a correct statement. And we had already at that point waived the requirement for a second meeting to get final approval. We were ready to go ahead and finalize this. So where do we stand now? We don't have proper signage. With notification 30 days ago. 
So what are you going to do about telling uh, people that they're the children and land? Well, just, just, all right, so, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. You put it on the record, so I'll put this in the record for you. I am not the only one that asked that question. I'm also not the only one that mentioned the fact that there is a high water table and wet ground there because it was brought up by people who came in for the public hearing last month, and it was brought up by other people on this board, so you pointing out to just me being the source of that is rude. Were you talking about the same property? There's only one property in front of us right now, Mr. Condon, right. and that's that parcel in the corner, okay, below the bridge, that you brought three or four feet of fill in to bring it up to grade, which, by the way, is effective at getting it up above the water table. 20 years ago. 20, 20 years ago, I built that much. All clean fill from Red Cross the street. You know, my question was answered at that meeting. I don't I mean, no big I deal out of it. I asked about it, I it was answered, and I, I was done. The question uh, on a filled lot, seven acre lot, ever, ever brought up before, John? It had been brought up before when there was questionable fill. In fact, it's been brought up on your parcels before, sir, with all due respect. Oh. It's been brought up on your parcel down off of Red or off of Reynolds Road here. It was brought up, up to one off of Peter Dam Road. That's why it's been I brought know. up on the one off of Route 9. There are any place, you, John, any that is place that we go. Sick and tired. But the thing is, is any place that we have a question, sell, we have to Please ask. sell that I bring in. That is why I'm here. What are the reasons? I'm sick and tired of it. All right, so, people with a phone number or so if, something to grab in no, the system or to inflect something on me. That's no, that that sir, no. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Sir, this has nothing to do with anything personal. This is a question, question, and you can look through the record. I ask questions. That's what I'm here to do. You ask inappropriate questions, John. Inappropriate that's my, what? That's my position. And you just did again. Really? Yeah, a, 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 so? guy, a, a guy that saw somebody dumped that I complained about on my property that I cleaned up. And we asked him more than answer, once. And you fixed the problem, didn't you? That's all. We asked, you answered, we fixed it. Be honest with you, I asked on this parcel, you answered. I dropped it. You didn't. I did. Right then, as soon as you answered it, I checked with Mr. Martin. I was given the answer that what's under the ground is not our or anything of our business. I was done with it and I set it aside. You brought I, it up tonight. I did I not. You brought it up tonight. No, no, no. You brought it up before you can start anything else, sir. Right now we have, as far as I'm concerned, a closed public hearing. I'm going to make a, or ask for a motion to table it. We don't have signage, which we are required in our code to have. So if somebody would like to make a motion to table this hearing, I'll entertain it. Hearing that, then are we going to move forward? I'll make a motion on the table based on the lack of signage. There's a motion on the table. Is there a second? Excuse me, sir. Is there a second for that motion? That's not on, that's not, uh, not what we're discussing right now. There's a second, or there's a motion on the table. Is there a second for that motion? Second. We have a second. So we have a motion and a second to table due to inadequate signage on this property. Could I ask a question? Be yes, you do. Yeah. Um, I don't quite understand. Is, is, is the public hearing just for the signage? No, the public hearing is actually for a one lot subdivision, a seven acre one lot subdivision off a 95 acre parcel, which is what I asked for earlier, the description of it. Okay. okay. And in order to do a subdivision, there's certain notification that's required in our code. Unfortunately, that includes a sign on the site so that people can see that there's a public hearing coming for that action. Okay. Okay. There was not one last month, so we tabled it. Okay. There is not one now. Okay. I wasn't sure. I drove by, didn't see one, but I was hoping the wind blew it down. We've had some strong wind, but there is no. Okay. So, so, so the other questions that Mr. Condon has asked is, is, is irrelevant to the public hearing. At the, to be honest with you, we can't have a public hearing until it's been notified properly. Okay. So anything so beyond that, we need to sign up, then we can have a public hearing, and those questions can yes. be answered at the public hearing. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 
And it's clear that this is the, that big parcel is turning into two lots. So this is a two lot. It's a two lot subdivision. I don't want a lot subdivision. No, two I'm lot. sorry. If I said one lot, that, that, I this is two lot. lot. This is this property is going to be two. So lot. I have a motion and I have a second to table this till further notice. All right. If you would read, please I call. Do you have more questions? I do. You yes. said until further notice or until the sign is put up, and then we. If he puts a well, sign up and then we do it next month, is that how that works? Yes. So, yes. Okay. As long as it's properly notified right. next month. We so call why does this agree? We table it until. Sure. Okay. I'm, not, I'm not real clear on Yeah, that. the motion would be to table it for this month. If you table it, you can reopen it at any subsequent okay. meeting. You don't have to schedule it. You have to put it in the paper and advertise it. Okay. Okay. Perfect. I have another question. Thank you, Mark. As soon as you see And then you brought your final question. I have one more question. No, it's not a problem. I want to say no. Nine or ten years ago, I annoyed the board by asking them questions like that. They didn't mean you before you started developing the engineers with questions. So, Mr. Martin, Mr. Maureen has a quick question for you. The cost of the advertisement in the paper, is that borne by the town or by the applicant? It's uh, borne by the town. Uh, town. It's, uh, well, it, it's, it's all over. Thank you for your attention. And I would just ask the minute takers to uh, make sure you get Mr. Arnold's remarks. <coughs> Phil, I'm with you. It's part of the record, please. Could you just call the roll on tabling us? Mr. Yes. Mr. Mr. Burman? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Arnold? Yes. So that would be six, I think. Five, one, five, five. Let me see, Mr. So five with one and two. And did Mr. Kanye oh, yeah. decide to not to subcode No, no, he's just the lack of the Thank you. So at this point, I'll turn over the meeting to Ron and let him have it back. Hopefully, he'll run it a lot much smoother for the rest of the evening. Good job. <laughs> Yes, you did a job. He can, but I don't apologize for the same thing. No, it's, um, I think what you also did for the purposes of the record was you helped reiterate that this wasn't something that we do with singularity for this particular applicant anytime that we see an application from him. These are questions that we ask of a routine nature of applications that we see for all subdivisions, regardless of who the applicant is. Well, and I wanted, I wanted to make sure it was in the record yeah. that it wasn't just my observation. Well, and there were several other observations you were uh, singled out on that, so it wasn't just the no. applicant, it was other folks who were uh, bringing to light information that was important for the review. And we would do that as a matter of course for all uh, all applications that we do in the town. So with that, we're going to move on. We've got uh, Mr. Don Mitfield here tonight. He's going to talk to us about a site plan review for top notch self storage. So, Tom, you care to give us a little background? Yeah. And tell us a little bit about what you like to do. I want to basically add one building along Route 32. I went to the zoning board last month to approve the variance, so we're set back for that. We changed the design. Did you, did you say the variance was granted? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Um, and now uh, we're here for the initial planning meeting. Um, Kind of in summary, the existing firm that's along 32 just remains as is. That will not be touched. We're going to add a storage building, or with your permission, proposing to add a storage building, uh, 35 by 210 along uh, Route 32. And it'll be the same uh, as the existing buildings in every aspect color, material, engineering. Uh, the exterior lights will be the same, the 70 watt high pressure sodium, only on the side of the storage units, non facing Route 32. Um, the traffic flow increased about one to two visits per day at max, probably this uh, completed. And the existing 10 parking spaces will remain. 
Um, we're going to add two more dry wells, which will be now an alleyway to be able to run off, stormwater run off. So it's very similar to the last well, what you have on these. That's a 25 by 210 there. And we basically did the same thing, or want to do the same thing on the other side. So it'll be actually a buffer for the, the roads. It's going to be because there's no doors on the side. On the side facing the facing right. Center. So they only face into the alleyway. Yeah, that's one thing I want to make sure that you. Yeah, that's only the, the access only facing into the interior access side. In the Burma Mains. In the Burma Mains, right. Burma right. Mains, the way it is. So once this building's up, there's probably going to be 10 to 15 feet till the burn, and then it'll be like a little swale and it'll run off from the one side of this building because it runs off, you know, from the peak. The peak yeah, they're very slight peak. They're just quarter per foot. Mm -hmm. but between the burn and the back side of the proposed building, Don, is that, what is that? Well, if you've been through there, you've seen the beige. It'll probably be the beige color all the way through. No, I meant uh, um, uh, at the ground level. What is oh, it? the ground level? Is, is oh, it? we'll make a swale. Okay. Then we'll uh, take care of any runoff. Probably go. It's going to be grass. It's not going to be grass. Yeah, yeah, grass. Yeah. You're not gonna, it's not going to be grass. It's a driving lane or no, no, anything like that. No, no. No access. Got it. Now, the other thing I should point out, just for the board background, this this was a matter of variance application, I think, in 2008. Yes. And the primary difference being, and I think this is what I think was enough to swing the zoning board, um, the, the prior application, the building ran the full length uh, of the building next to it. And you can see this is somewhat shorter now. And the parking spaces that are shown there are, are therefore in fact retained and not made um, uh, useless. So um, that was a substantive change that was made in the application uh, in part from the one in 2008. And uh, that was reviewed just last month and the approval was obtained for the area management plan in this period of time. How you found the uh, 21 foot uh, lane to work out for you and right. the building. That, yeah. that seems to be a good yeah. number. That's, um, these are all engineered uh, by tracking, you know, obviously they're a good product. Yeah. They can handle quite a blow. But now the 30 footers that are there now, mm -hmm. they have doors on both sides. They right? do. Yeah. So is, are these going to be a 25 foot deep I um, bay? Or how? Decided yet. There's a couple of different ways to do these buildings. You can actually do an interior building oh. as a U. Okay. And have the small 5 by 10s in there. The 5 by 10s are the main. And that's one way to do it. Okay. And, um, so it might be a little different configuration than the one you had right now. Sure, yes. But it'll look the same or exactly. similar from the outside. Right. Okay. This may seem like a stupid question. No, no there's none. <laughs> what was this in front of zone before? Seven uh, seven 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 yes. yes. Okay. And then the other thing that has to go to the back of them for something useful. So he's hitting on a triumvirate here. He's very, very This is a specified special use permit in the in the zoning table for this yeah. Excuse me, Tom. Well, how much did you say between the bar and the, the, the 32 side of the proposed building? Probably 10 to 15, 10 to 15. Is, is there probably not enough to get a fire truck or anything down and through there? I'm a little concerned there's only doorways in the front. If they had to get a, a piece well, of fire apparatus in there, it might yeah, be fire. So they can drive across the grass on the back side, sure. You know, there's not going to, it'll be passable. But it is not pavement back there. We've got the burn there, so what I'm saying is. No, from the end of the building to the burn will be 10 to 15 feet. So, normal one lane is nine, right? Another yeah, probably, probably not enough to get a piece of apparatus in there if they, if they had a fire fire from the back. So, I'm, I'm a little concerned with the doors just in the front. Um, um, and, and now you're saying you may break it off into five or ten. So, now we're going to go into a, one small door and all the way to the left or the right and not be able to get to the back end of this building? Uh, no. Uh, I could show you the schematic of that once we finally decided how it, how it will be designed. But So it's 25 feet deep. Um, about in the middle, you'll have one door, it's a three foot wide, and then it'll go up to four. It'll go in probably uh, 10 feet and then make a right. 
So the back line can all be 5 by 10s interior access through this exterior door. And those 5 by 10 doors will be in a hallway. Mm -hmm. Very common at storage. They'll have a little same roll up over you see from the roof. Mm -hmm. And with a fire been, hazard, yeah. I mean, there's always potential for anything that we've seen. I understand that. Protect the panel is not allowed by um, yeah. contracts. So um, they can fight a fire from this place. Actually, from 32, pull over, there's better access because I'm lower grade. They can just throw water. No, I understand all that, but the access to the building and then getting to the back. And I don't know how much. Jurisdiction we have over that. Um, well, we usually what we've done in the past, Mike, is we refer to the fire department and ask for them to to do a peer review to give us their uh, okay. input. Just so, just so you know that I am a member of the department. Yeah, no, no. Typically, what we've done in the past, we okay. other guys like that that uh, we think could could give cause for concern. Yeah. Um, back. It's single story and it's twenty five wide. Okay, which is it's hugely substantial. What's the concern with fire that they wouldn't be able to reach the back of the building? Or yeah, there's, there's not much, you know, to get a piece of apparatus into this back of the building here. We're going to be sending people in, in in there without, you know, if they had to, like, tear the back off and fire was in the back. Okay. And that kind of stuff. So a little concern would be if there was a better width in there so that you could get a piece of apparatus in there. Again, that's something I'm not sure where we go here. I can sculpt the firm, so there'll be one lane access for a fire truck. Yeah, no, I can do that. Yeah. It's moving a little to the side of the burn. Okay. Yeah, we'll make it so there's. But yeah. wouldn't they be able to access the building from the outside? I mean, it's, it's a storage building. It's metal, correct, sir? Right. So, accessing the door. Well, they're going to only have one entrance through, through the one yeah, side. Yeah, I'm saying finding it from the rear, from outside, it'd be able to. It's not, a, it's not a home, it's not a residential facilities in a so called industrial style building, would they be able to fight and be able to attack from outside in if need be? I would, I would refer that question to the fire chief in, in, in light of uh, it. In this instance, it would be something like Iron Hollow catching on fire. Are you going to risk guys going in there to put that out? Or they that's push, push that's my out? question. Yeah, let it burn. And, uh, no, no, I guess there's no guys don't do that. There. <laughs> let it go, we're insured. Yeah. And I don't want everyone to say so, yeah. Um, just a concern I have. So that's a very good question. Though. Yeah. Thank you. Any idea what our percent um, site coverage is now? I don't really have a, a good feel for where the macadam is. Or, or right now we have um, not primary. It's 3.25 acres. Yeah. We're going to add 5,000 square feet. I have right now 32,000 feet of square footage. So it'll go from 32 to 37. A bill uh, increase in square footage. So 10% would be. And in between these, you have gravel? No, it's all paved. Okay, so that, that counts too, mm -hmm. this site coverage. Towards the south side, how far does your pavement go? Uh, just enough to support a good turn radius of a, a vehicle. I think it's 30 something feet out. Okay. They do. No, traffic trailers tend to the turn but in back there. It's all, uh, they overshoot out the gravel and then come back through. Right. So um, they would take it from roughly 35,000 to 37,000. Yes. Percent. But John is mentioning the cab as part of that. That's You're right. That's a building. That's a building. And so, I'm not sure it's a huge problem. He has really good drainage here and all. The drainage is outstanding. The drywalls are, are really put us yeah. SW, triple P. It, uh, they're not actually a requirement, but I put them in just for um, those anomalies we have here where the ground's frozen and then it rains four inches. See? And a good part of that burn is my favorite. A lot of the water from Route 32 would come into our property. That's the reason I built it that way, because that is a higher elevation. Well, that, that rises to a question I have. We now have a town consulting engineer who has been retained. Um, so, you know, it's, this is one of these ones that's kind of on the fence here. So if, if you want to refer this on to them for their review of the SWIFT and, and the drainage plan. Oh, yeah, I think that'd be a good idea. I mean, uh, it, you know, in town. 
in concert with some of the changes that we've talked about asking Don to make to the berm so that you know, the buyers can have better access. I mean, there'll be a little bit more uh, site work than maybe we initially thought to. So in addition to a, you know, with, from, of a referral um, to the fire department, we'll probably make yeah, sure that more ask the uh, Saratoga County. Um, before, that, we'll also like that. before we refer this to engineer though, as far as for stormwater and all, where this building is proposed, what's there now under that building? Gravel. <laughs> and I'm not allowed to have outdoor storage, so I can't right have right there's no cat in there when this building is going. No, uh, maybe about the first three feet. We'll now, there's those engineers who are at the school of thought that gravel surfaces are in fact impervious. They become compacted and right. they control the surface. So, the, the only reason I'm asking is, is if, if this building is going on what would have already been called impervious anyways, then you haven't had actually added any impervious area to this site. So it would fall onto the previous plan, you know, the previous approval as far as stormwater. It's impervious, yeah, it's, pro it's frozen. It looks like right now in this area of photograph, this is not an area that's paved. The building is going to be built on a paved area. Uh, about What's going to happen is this along this area here, you can see um, this is pitch, so it slopes away. Mm -hmm. So they're going to have to saw cut. If those are uh, 20, 21 feet, so right. 10 foot 5 inches, they're going to cut the pavement. Uh, DA Collins will come in and put in two dry wells like we did on the other side. And then pitch from the new building, so it's this is, is the existing is here in this alley. Right. But, but my, my point is right now, the area that this building is going to rest on is paved. So it is impervious to that. Paved partially. 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 Yeah, it's going to be 25 feet wide. I think maybe five feet of it's paved right now. Oh. Okay. And the rest is gravel. All right. And it's all, all graded. How, how, how long ago did we review this the last time? Uh, it was back in 2008. That's not this one, right? It's really good map. Yeah, this, because I, this, so you dated 2004. Yeah, this is no well, this has gone through several iterations. The, I'm just talking about the last one was the variance was denied, but he's been in that thing. No, 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 I'm talking about the original, when we reviewed it for the first time. Yeah, I know, I still lose the bill. We've been there for 14 years. Yeah, we're on 14. Since then, you know, so we're 2004, 2005, 2007. Just a bit of 2004, 2005. Uh, uh, 2004, I believe. So, are we? What, what would be our next step as it related to Seeker for this? Then? Um, well, I, I, I believe it's an uh, unlisted action. So, um, there needs to be, I don't think there needs to be any referral or claim of legal status if it, it's not type one. So, um, you could. Take out the secret form now if you feel you have sufficient information, or if you'd like to wait until you get some additional information from the various questions, and you can take it up at the next week. What do you think, for? I mean, if we're you believe you agree that it's an unlisted action. I think there's. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, I agree with that. So um, I, I don't think there's any need with an unlisted action to claim the agent status. There are no other involved agencies. So um, you're free and clear on that. So you could take it out tonight, or you could uh, wait to get some more answers to some of the questions you have. I don't think we would be doing ourselves a public great service if we were to jump ahead before we had all of our information. Agreed. Agreed. So we can hold off on uh, taking, uh, taking the review of the secret for tonight. Uh, pending, of course, you know, we'll be here back and some of these other, other folks. Now, we're working our way into this relationship with the we're going to be feeling our way for the first few months. I believe um, we're trying to set this up in each and every instance where that referral is made to them for an escrow account, you know, from the applicant, you know, for their review. Um, so I just want to make sure that's out there and we have your consent, you know, for that. We'll get an estimate before sure. you can review it. And approve it. No, yeah, it's just no cost is incurred until until you've reviewed it and approved it. Yeah, we just say 
same thing with uh, with believe Jim Mitchell last time. Yeah. He uh, went back and forth with my father Ron, right. and uh, they worked it out. And I have all that information right here. So it would be the same thing on the other side. Okay. All the numbers are there. All the uh, engineering data. So I, I'm hearing that the consensus is to get a uh, review from the All right. Okay. Got the motion. Yeah, and we have the applicant's consent to the escrow. Yeah. I mean, at least it's starting. Yeah. Again, no shock will be incurred until you know the amount you're approving of the work to be done. Okay. Oh, and um, this is on the borderline, uh, I, at least I, I was perceiving of what you want to do for public hearing. It's not right on Route 9 per se, but it is within the distance of it. It is in C1. Um, would you like to have a public hearing would be the other question. Seems how we're delaying uh, going forward with Seeker until next month. If we hold a public hearing, will that be harming the applicant because it's going to be here anyway. I think everything can be done in the next one. And historically, we have always said it, site plans, public hearings. Even though most of them are, well, you don't miss one. Yeah. Uh, They're populated about this month. Yeah. <laughs> There's one person. <laughs> So no, and there is no sign. There is no sign requirement for a site plan review. <laughs> Just to be clear, <laughs> if there is one more, King goes and it doesn't cost much. So, anyways, the, I'm actually more in line with definitely having the public hearing. I'm, I'm just still wondering what are we asking the engineer to look at the, the change in stormwater or the existing site completely? Or I would say the change, the change just that. Change. So we can at least make it specifically to that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Coupled with the the, the, the coping the out, the coping out of that berm and making it wider and how it affects the whole. Right. That's right. Actually, got the, the combined effect. Yeah. Combined. So, Mark, would you like to make a motion for a public hearing? Make a motion. Do we, do we know we'll have everything we need before? Well, let's see. You know, it's it's we can only take what we can only take. Yeah, we've discovered yeah. that. Well, we have, I, I so far referred to the fire department for a peer review. Um, and the verge. And the verge, the, uh, and then, uh, and that's on the proposed change only. And then county manager. Yeah, yeah um, the county referral, um, yeah. yeah, that would need to be made as well. Yeah. And when do they, when do they meet? Thursday. Right after us. This one. So we have Thursday. Thursday. So we have them. Yeah, so I think we have them in time. And that would probably be handled by staff. That's not going to require a huge. Can I just? With the fire, make if they send some, have something in writing and yeah, I'll, I'll write it a lot. Yes, I'll try to get a lot. And so it's in their packet. Um, okay, county referral. So yeah, before we go forward with that board, in terms of additional information that you would need on the site plan from Mr. Bingo to move the store, is there anything additional? That you would need to see but, or to uh, usually I'll play on Jen's lighting. Will there be any lighting on this building? Yeah, same as the existing lighting. Uh, they're they alternate 70 watt high pressure sodium and they uh, won't be projecting on the 32 at all. Okay, we very usually like to see an indication of place without that or the okay. lighting, the fixtures where they are, whether they be pole or wall, wall mount. No, they're wall mount. Okay, and, and if you could provide us a, a spec, like a cut sheet of what they are. Uh, the lights? Yeah, it just sure. gives us a little bit of the, the manufacturers usually supply those free of charge. Yeah. Then they give you the, the information as far as where they put out in terms of put candles and. Yeah. The fire issue, um, I don't know. Uh, I can design it any which way you want. So that, I just don't see it being a big issue with storage because if they do have some flammables in there, they're a violation of the lease agreement. And, you know, 
Unfortunately, people don't always do what they're supposed to do, so we have to look at it as though that's what's going to occur. So we're asking for the people who are charged with handling those situations to give us uh, their comments, because they know more of that better than we do. There's nobody living in that. Hmm. So we won't. Re we certainly could require you to put in sprinkler systems. No. So we, we don't know that answer. <laughs> <laughs> right. no. but, uh, but, then, but then again, remember, we're not allowed to. Yeah, that's right. You have an unsecured right? Well, I used to. We passed. My father-in-law? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. When was that? That was last month. Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't know that. Yeah. So there's not any way of moving that room? No. I do too. He was past president of the Green Jackets football team back when I played. Yeah, he's quite a guy. He was a son. Sorry to hear that. He might have asked you to walk. So, board, is there any additional information that you think you need or need to see in order to have what you need to move forward with this application? I'll have my staff on to by next time as well. Okay, so I, I think we, we'd be comfortable with that. I give you a copy of my staff in advance, so you have to stop. Okay. Because that, we have got a, a list of the seeker that, um, <laughs> for this, that we, we, did, we didn't have a seeker um, unlisted action uh, form filled out for this. Sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah, there was. Yes, yes. It's all Yeah. I didn't see it. Did you get one? Yeah, the part one. I don't have it. Southern package. That's why I asked you about it. Right. We're, we're communicating about it. About it. I was getting nervous when you said, like, you could move ahead with Seeker. It's like, you made a copy. You made a copy. You made all copies, right? I mean, they should all be complete. They're still at Kinko's. Oh, they're saying they can't go right now. They're with Gardner Signs. <laughs> Or what we'd like to do as far as the public hearing? Well, make a motion that we schedule a public hearing for top notch self storage on April 17th. Yeah. The day after yesterday. Yep. And uh, we'll hold on here. Thank you, Jack Stevens. And uh, 701. I have a motion by Eric for a public hearing on April 17th, 2017 for. Uh, I'm going to be able to come out some storage site plan to do about the time. I'll second that. And the second by Mr. Arnold. Any further questions? Comments? Dr. Brown's reversal. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Attentions? Motion carries. Good. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yes, sir. Any other questions? So, 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 so much smoother when you run No. It was your fault. Who's the engineer I've got to get a hold of?